Hey guys, so this is an introduction to uh, all the features included in uh, my new mod here. Um, specifically, this video is going to break down uh, four specific features, um, or add-ons as I'm calling them. Uh, the food and utility fixes, making custom clothes, power armor diversification, and smart gun destruction. So if you're just interested in seeing those, you can skip to that timestamp. Um, and that will be linked in, on the YouTube page in the description section. Otherwise, you can just navigate to those items on the uh, mod page, and then that th uh, the video of that specific feature is going to be there as well. Um, otherwise, in this description, I'm just going to kind of explain how to, uh, how to navigate the mod page. So under the description section, um, I give a high-level statement and list of all the features. So I would just recommend that you look over that list, uh, read those high-level statements, and then if anything piques your curiosity or interest, um, find that feature under what's included, and then you know click the spoiler show and uh, look at the inf uh, all the information that I detail about that feature. Um, I also, within um, the spoiler for each feature, I try to break down um, I, I try to give a, at least one image that best exemplifies what that feature is doing. Um, but there are a lot of images in the image tab of the mod page uh, that showcase everything. So for example, the dynamic power armor, I just show one screenshot of like what the power armor backpack, for example, looks like. But if you want to see that the power armor backpack on multiple different types of power armor, you know, go to the image tab and then like look over at least a few of them. Um, but yeah, anyways, this is going to be the last mod that I release and I'm taking a walk away from Nexus, uh, and I won't be publishing anything on Nexus anymore moving forward. Uh, but I will be updating some of my existing work on Nexus, but that's about it. Um, and uh, I'll also be starting to work more on creating my own personal game, but, uh, Anyways, I hope you guys have a great day, and I'm going to start with uh, breaking down the four specific features that I thought merited more a more descriptive video. The rest of them, I think, could be broken down by just describing them, so that's why I didn't do a video on every single feature. This is a showcase for the uh, add-on smart gun destruction. Um, so right now what I have is just a regular uh, powerful sniper rifle. It does 60 damage, pretty decent. Um, my only issue is that the sniper rifle when you shoot, um, it, it's okay. Uh, it, it, that's good for a sniper rifle, but when you add the 50 cal, it, it doesn't really change at all. Like it, it, it sounds basically identical to what you're hearing right now. Um, the impact is also basically exactly the same. It creates a little bit of a hole in the track, you know, it, it's okay. Um, the thing is, 50 cal is powerful. Um, I did not feel like the game reflected the power behind a 50 cal. So uh, bear in mind, this is going to be a little loud, and I'm going to stop talking now. In fact, let's just... Just make it a little cooler, even though it's a 50 cal. So now that it's a 50 cal, the sound effect's gonna be different. It's gonna be a lot different, and it's gonna be more powerful and impactful, and the impact is gonna be different. As you can see, the screen shakes. You can feel the power behind this, this, this shot. As a bonus, uh, the gun can now also explode bodies, which is the other part of this um, add-on, is that basically larger weapons, that's your mini guns, your rocket launchers, etc., cetera, um, they will pretty frequently explode a body. It's just gonna just cause a lot more mayhem and destruction. So now I'm showcasing that real quick. This guy will just do this. Mm -hmm. 
I just wanted to get those guys out of the way. So now I'm going to do the minigun, and we'll see how this rolls. It's all random. It's one in four chance that sometimes the bodies are going to pop and sometimes they don't, but it should feel very destructive and natural and fun. So that one didn't with the minigun, and that's okay. That can happen sometimes. guy exploded. That was the one in four. Um, but as you can see, like, the uh, the body exploded. This guy, he had limbs explode. It just, the point of this mod is to make the guns feel more impactful. So now I'm going to switch over real quick and do all of that again, but this time with a rocket launcher. Um, you're going to notice a lot more exploding bodies. I mean, it's a rocket launcher. More so for, like, you know, a mini nuke for example. The point is, is if you do high explosive weapons, you shouldn't be getting people that are just perfectly in mint condition thereafter. Like, some, there's a reason why they have uh, died in this game. So that guy, he just lost a leg. And while I'm doing this, the other thing I was going to say is, uh, Unless it's an explosive, explosives kind of have their own rules. But unless it's an explosive, basically, so that guy, his complete torso went, this guy lost both arms, it just felt powerful, right? So unless the, um, unless it's an explosive, basically guns will no longer uh, cut off limbs. They'll explode limbs, but they won't cut off limbs. Uh, in the vanilla game, a 10 millimeter pistol can just cut off a limb, and that just doesn't make any sense whatsoever. Um, so I have removed that as an option, unless it's like a sword or something. Of course, they can cut off limbs. But that's all. It, you know, this is a real quick and dirty showcase. Um, 50 cal also works like that. Uh, it's a little hit and miss. One issue I found with the 50 cal is if you kill them in one shot, the script that I use that explodes those bodies, it doesn't have a chance to activate, so you usually need at least two shots, and I'm doing this at low levels, so these guys can't survive two shots. So it's harder for me to showcase the uh, sniper rifle doing it, but it will do it. That's the point. The 50 cal rifle will explode the limbs more frequently. That's just gonna be base. But then also the torso can explode as well. Um, on occasion, so it's just gonna feel more impactful and more powerful along with those sound effects and stuff Hopefully you guys enjoy this one This is the showcase for power armor diversification and backpacks now so uh, I'm not gonna go over the diversification portion of it, which basically uh, changes how easy it is to upgrade uh, lower tier armor like T45 and stuff versus high tier armor like XL1. Um, but I mean, that's like one thing where you could max out uh, the T45 thing versus the XL1. And then there's like armor stats, differences, little bonuses, uh, whatever. Um, right now I really wanna just focus on the backpacks so that being said, if you go to torso of any power armor, except the Raider power armor, that's the only one that's not like this, but go to the uh, torso of any power armor, and then you're going to see the regular, um, the Mark version or whatever it is for that armor, uh, and the material mod, which is your paints and stuff, and then the miscellaneous mod. So this is... Uh, like the medical pump, reactive plate, stealth plate, and even the jetpack, right? So that's kind of cool. And then you're going to see a new mod slot, and that's for the backpacks and side pouches. It's its own mod slot. Um, 
and it can if you just do the side pouches that's rank one in armor backpack and side pouches that's rank two and then um, as you can see the backpack version is incompatible with jetpack meaning that if you have the backpack and side pouches on the power armor frame like on the chest uh, the jetpack will be not available to you to build it would just will not show up in the uh, miscellaneous mod um, but if you remove it and then replace it with like side pouches, you would be able to have the jetpack. So you can have your cake and eat it too, get a 60 pound increased weight. Um, but yeah, so now I'm going to show this. So this is the backpack and side pouches for the X01. So I tried to work really, really hard on playing with the meshes and working with them to ensure that there'd be no clipping. Um, I, uh, I think I did a pretty good job. It moves very naturally uh, with the player as the player walks and runs. Um, you get a nice little like ammo belt there. It's got that uh, leather armor kind of going across it now. Two little side satchels. Um, it just looks like you're ready to go into the wastes and that you are in fact carrying a lot of gear. I and mean, it just makes more sense. It's more lore friendly in my, in my mind. Um, so they're all like that. Um, and the backpacks mesh are custom to the armor model. Uh, and they all have that unique slot. Now the only one that's a little different is the T60. So now I'm gonna show you T60. Um, as part of the diversification, uh, T60 is the only armor that the way I changed it is I gave it a small debuff to the armor health, and that's the only thing that I did uh, to it. So technically that would just be a negative debuff and that might make somebody angry, right? Um, but the bonus of it is that it's pretty well balanced compared to all the other changes I've made with all the other armors. Um, so this is the T60 torso here. So it's pretty well balanced just like in the, in the way it fits, but the biggest deal here is that you get a miscellaneous mod and then an auxiliary miscellaneous mod. So that means you get two miscellaneous mods for this one torso. So you could do, you know, the backpacks for this guy, you know, that, that could be here or that could be here, or actually the backpack can only be in this first slot. Sorry, that's to make the, it, it was a design decision, but it doesn't matter. But anyways, so you can still do your backpack and pouches if you want, but if you don't want to do that, you could do a jetpack and you could do Tesla coils, right? Like, you can have a lot of fun with this. Um, so that's a really, really powerful additive thing, um, given the fact that uh, its health has taken just a slight debuff. Um, but that's the only thing that's uh, majorly different with the T60 is that it has the two modification slots. Um, but yeah, uh, like I said, you know, you can have the jetpack with the side pouches, no clipping, looks great, and you still get a uh, carry capacity bonus. Um, so that I, I just try to make it as compatible and easy to go in as possible. Um, one thing I'll point out is there is a mod on Nexus that does something, it, it's exactly actually what I did here um, with like an auxiliary slot. Uh, that's actually the mod that gave me this idea. Um, I designed mine ground up myself, so we actually wouldn't conflict at all. You can actually use that mod and my mod, but you'd get like three slots then? Yeah, you'd get like three slots for the T60. The rest of them would just have two slots plus my backpack slot, and that'd be fine. But the T60 would get three slots then. I uh, see your call if you think that that's overkill. <laughs> but um, yeah, it, it should be pretty compatible with most things. I think the biggest thing would probably be uh, any mod that alters uh, the base power armor uh, torso. That's gonna potentially cause uh, a conflict and then you know just put my mod after that so you get my settings and stuff and that's that i hope you guys have a great day and moving on to the next video hey guys so now i'm going to show you how to create your own custom clothes uh as part of my mod um, so right now where I'm at is I've 
installed my mod. I'm going to rename it. Right now it's Custom Shirt Creator, but I like the name Create Custom Close with an exclamation point, but I'm going to do that. Anyways, <clears throat> so on the mod page, if you scroll down, I say how to quickly create custom clothes. Basically, you just got to use uh, GIMP and go to this specific file location. Data textures, uh, armor, high school outfit, and that's in your like Fallout 4 directory folder. Um, if you have any ex script extended version of uh, any of Bethesda's games, you can actually just right click on that uh, shortcut and open file location. It will go right there. Um, this is for Fallout 4 VR. We're not looking at that. We're looking at the regular Fallout 4 games. So I'm going to go back a folder, go back in here, and then it's uh, the texture path was data, textures, armor, high school outfit. And so these are the, the three colors. You got black, blue, and red. Um, and these are the things that you have to edit. And what you would do is you would edit these in GIMP. You can use in your choice thing. GIMP is free, it's quick, it's easy. And the point is that you have to save it as a .dds. That's important. And you don't want to change the name either. You got to keep the name that I have. But other than that, you know, do what you want. So I'm going to open this up in GIMP. And hit OK. Perfect. Beautiful. Love it. All right. So um, here you can add text using GIMP. Uh, do whatever you want here. Um, I find that Paint 3D is actually pretty badass. I know that that seems weird, but I'll show you why. So I'm going to go New. And then I'm going to go Canvas, and I'm going to go Transparent Canvas, and there's a reason for that. And then we're going to go Text, and we're going to do, doesn't matter what it is, do this. Happy. All right. And then we'll go back to 2D Shapes. I'm just going to do a circle, a big circle. And then I'll go to brushes, and I'm going to again hit this, and we'll do some X's for eyes. All right, and then I'm going to save this, save the image as, and then we'll do, yeah, sure, untitled, doesn't matter what it's named. Save to my desktop. Okay. So keep this open in GIMP. Now I have a, a invent. This is basically what you could consider a stencil. So you could copy paste this stencil onto anything. So if you hit open with uh, on this thing too and put it into GIMP, you're gonna have basically two pages open. You got this one here, and then you have this one here. Now keep in mind this is a <clears throat> this is a 2K texture. And this over here is also 2K, meaning if I were to take the stencil and copy it directly over here, it would be massive. So we're going to want smaller. Um, I usually do, I, I save it in like Paint 3D and then I bring it down um, by going image and then I scale image right here. And then I bring it down to about 500. It will auto do the height so it doesn't deform it. <coughs> so that that's a better size for me. And then what I'll do is I will just draw a box around it, file edit, and we'll do copy. And then we can go back over here and then edit and we can do paste. And look at that. And then, you know, it's, it's an invisible stencil, so I can place it over my shirt because this is just what I wanted. Um, if you wore, uh, like, I, I, I don't know um, what kind of shirts you wear, but, you know, you can, like, design shirts that are trademarked or whatever. I mean, this is just personal use for yourself, right? Um, but, yeah, so you, you drop this in there. I can't remember. I think this might actually be, I think this is the back. I think it might be unintuitive, and that's actually the back, but we'll find out. If it is the back, then just put it over here. In fact, I could put it in both places, but 
for fun's sake, I'm just going to leave it like that. Anyway, click anywhere, and now it's there. And that's all good. So I'm going to do export as. You keep the name exactly the same, .dds. Hit export. Replace. Export. Um, the reason why this went away is because uh, the preview image is because I didn't hit uh, like keeping the MIP maps or whatever it is. Um, you don't have to, it's not important, but it does give you a preview image if you do it. Um, so we're going to do the same for the blue shirt. And again, now I have a stencil, so this is even easier. I just, you know, can do another paste. And this one we'll put over here. Why not? Perfect. And and we can export this guy. And we're going to hit place. So this is what I was talking about. Uh, sorry, it was, yeah. So the compression, that's how you get like the... Uh, the little preview icon. If I remember right, BC3DXT5 is, is fine. Um, so anyways, you hit export on that and see, you can see the little thing there. Anyway, I think that's good enough. Um, so now I'm gonna show you in game how this looks. So I did two shirts, um, took me, I guess, yeah, technically I'm at seven minutes now, but it, it ideally it shouldn't take you too long. And then once you get the stencil, you know, you can copy paste it and or you can just have fun with it. The point is to just have fun with this. So now uh, once you're in game in your pre or a post-war house, the lore of it, the, what I think of it is like, you know, you left your clothes in the dryer and they're still there. Nobody cared about your ratty ass clothes. So there's uh, two major variants. Um, that's gonna be the version with fatigues and then their version with jeans. Um, and the colors all use the same shirt uh, or you know what I mean? So like the black shirt with fatigues and the black shirt with blue jeans, they use the same black shirt. So when you did that editing, it's gonna show up on both. So yeah, the black shirt, it did show up on the back. But then um, I think it was the blue shirt then, it's gonna be on the front. So I was right. It was unintuitive uh, where I thought the uh, the front looked for the back. It was actually the uh, for the black shirt. It looked like it was the front, but it was actually the back. Um, so the front of the shirt is actually in the bottom right of the image, if you recall. But anyways, as you can see, I've made a custom shirt. It took seconds, right? And you guys are feel free to like load up uh, Nexus with like your own textures for these shirts if you want. And you know, it's obviously gonna have to require my mod because I created the framework so that this can easily be implemented. Um, but yeah, I, I just want you guys to be able to make your own stuff. I thought it'd be kind of fun. Um, the other thing is, is you can go to the uh, uh, clothing workbench. I renamed it to clothing workbench. It's from uh, wearable backpacks and pouches. Super great mod, highly recommend. Anyway, clothing modification. Uh, the fatigue version, so not the blue jean version, but the fatigue version, um, you can make a warm alternate of it. So I'm going to show that off real quick here. Come on, zoom out more. All right, there you go. So... This is the blue shirt with fatigues. As you can see, um, it's just the it's the same blue shirt. Like I said, it's used across them. And then if we go to the warm black shirt with fatigues, 
you're going to see that uh, it's got a plaid undershirt now. It gives a small amount of additional protection. Um, but yeah, just a little more variance, and I think they look cool. So um, just just more customization for you guys. Uh, that that's the goal. The other cool thing is is like so if I drop the blue shirt, it actually uses the texture for the in-game object that you created as well, all in that same texture. So as you can see, it's going to show up in on the ground in-game like that as well. And that's it. All right. Took way too long to explain that stuff. Sorry about that. But uh, hopefully you enjoy that, that, that part of the mod. Um, and I hope you guys have a great day. Thanks. Next, I'm going to show you the food and utility chems, uh, food and utility fixes. So basically, the issue that I ran into is that it rendered the utility um, section of the chem station just unusable. And you know, there are mods that make sense to have stuff here, but a lot of this is intrusive, un not lore friendly stuff. And in a lot of these cases, near all of them, they actually give you these uh, like configuration hollow tapes and stuff like that when you install the mod just like right off the bat they force add it to you via script so you already have these you just can save them anywhere you want so this is just like a, a an additional backup that they do so all i did is basically i removed these things um from the construction menu like the configurations and stuff and then i try and consolidate like the canine harness and like anything else um camping gear is another one if you, which is like one of the required mods um, for this. So like if you have uh, fading signals uh, camping mod, uh, you can create camping gear and then it goes to that utility cam. So what I did is I just kind of moved everything over to this clothing workbench. Uh, so at the clothing workbench right now, the mod isn't installed of course. So this is like all of the uh, wearable backpacks and pouches uh, mods. Like this is how it's all laid out and stuff. Uh, the other issue, it, which is fine, it's just a little more messy than I would want. I tried to clean it up. But the other issue is that um, when you have wearable backpacks and pouches or the canine harness, uh, which again is back here, if you have the canine harness, then you uh, want to like uh, add carry weight. It does like this brackets and it says like what the carry weight is. Same with wearable backpacks and pouches, it says like what utility slot it's using like in brackets i detailed that on the mod page but wasn't sure if that was gonna like make sense um so i got rid of that and instead just what i did is i changed the description so now real quick i'm gonna get out of here go back to my desktop and then i'm going to reactivate that mod so now you can see what it looks like once it's all cleaned up So once it's all cleaned up, basically the utility section of the chem workbench is only going to like populate with like in-game lore-friendly utilities from mods that should be in the utility section of the chem workbench. Um, and then all the like the fabric that you would make as part of like camping, like you sew together a sleeping bag, you build. Uh, all that stuff that that's just all done at the chem or the the clothing workbench now so if we go back here and we go to utility it's just the cutting fluid and it will populate with other stuff as you like use those mods um, as it makes sense but right here this is the clothing workbench from wearable backpacks and pouches now it's really cleaned up and it's a seamless integration and that's what i wanted at the core was a seamless integration in like this one simple workbench instead of like 20 different ones you know you can just reuse this thing um clothing modifications that's from my mod where you can make custom clothes the k9 armor that's that uh the canine harness right there you can like build it and modify it here that it's just streamlined camping gear again you can build it and modify it here you know you make the tents you can make the sleeping bags it, it, it makes sense that it would be at the uh, clothing workbench where you do sewing and stuff and then backpacks 
um, it's a lot more streamlined. I, I detailed just like in the description a flat set carry weight increase or decrease as opposed to having like a modifier. So before in wearable backpacks and pouches you would create the wanderer backpack and then say I want it to have 50 pounds or 20 pounds or 100 pounds and then it would add a modifier to it where it would be like um, slot 31 cc for carry capacity 20 meaning its carry capacity was 20. Um, so I just say you know like here it, the, the carry capacity is set this is a, a finite item it is a singular backpack I chose a lore friendly weight that it increases your carry weight for and then just describe it um, and put it all into the same workbench. So that's, that's the utility and value of it. I know it's gonna be a niche market because you gotta have like all those mods, but those are really, really popular mods and I find it to be really useful and I, I really like it. So hopefully that makes more sense. Um, I was gonna do screenshots, but I felt like it just could confuse people or wouldn't do it justice. So I thought I'd break it all down here. And again, special thanks to those, all those mod authors for allowing me to just seamlessly put all this stuff into one workbench and clean up a lot of the clutter and stuff like that. All right. Thanks, guys. Next, I'm going to show you the food and utility chems, uh, food and utility fixes. So basically, the issue that I ran into is that it rendered the utility um, section of the chem station just unusable and you know, there are mods that make sense to have stuff here, but a lot of this is intrusive, un not lore-friendly stuff. And in a lot of these cases, near all of them, they actually give you these, uh, like, configuration holotapes and stuff like that when you install the mod. Just, like, right off the bat, they force add it to you via script. So you already have these, you just can save them anywhere you want. So this is just, like, a, a, an additional backup that they do. So all I did is basically I removed these things um, from the construction menu, like the configurations and stuff, and then I try and consolidate like the canine harness and like anything else. Um, camping gear is another one, if you, like, which is like one of the required mods um, for this. So like if you have uh, fading signals uh, camping mod. Uh, you can create camping gear and then it goes to that utility cam. So what I did is I just kind of moved everything over to this clothing workbench. Uh, so at the clothing workbench right now the mod isn't installed of course so this is like all of the uh, wearable backpacks and pouches uh, mods like this is how it's all laid out and stuff. Uh, the other issue it, which is fine it's just a little more messy than I would want. I tried to clean it up but the other issue is that um, when you have wearable backpacks and pouches or the canine harness, uh, which again is back here, if you have the canine harness then you uh, want to like uh, add carry weight. It does like this brackets and it says like what the carry weight is. Same with wearable backpacks and pouches. It says like what utility slot it's using like in brackets. I detailed that on the mod page but I wasn't sure if that was gonna like make sense. Um, so I got rid of that and instead just what I did is I changed the description. So now real quick, I'm going to get out of here, go back to my desktop, and then I'm going to reactivate that mod. So now you can see what it looks like once it's all cleaned up. So once it's all cleaned up, basically the utility section of the chem workbench is only going to like populate with like in-game lore-friendly utilities from mods that should be in the utility section of the chem workbench. Um, and then all the like the fabric that you would make as part of like camping, like you sew together a sleeping bag, you build. Uh, all that stuff that that's just all done at the chem or the, the clothing workbench now so if we go back here and we go to utility it's just the cutting fluid and it will populate with other stuff as you like use those mods um, as it makes sense but right here this is the clothing workbench from wearable backpacks and pouches now it's really cleaned up and it's a seamless integration and that's what i wanted at the core was a seamless integration in like just one 
simple workbench. Instead of like 20 different ones, you know, you can just reuse this thing. Um, clothing modifications, that's from my mod, where you can make custom clothes. The K9 armor, that's that, uh, the K9 harness, right there. You can like, build it and modify it here. That, it's just streamlined. Camping gear, again, you can build it and modify it here. You know, you make the tents, you can make the sleeping bags. It, it, it makes sense that it would be at the uh, clothing workbench where you do sewing and stuff. And then backpacks, um, it's a lot more streamlined. Uh, I detailed, just like in the description, a flat set carry weight, increase or decrease, as opposed to having like a modifier. So before in wearable backpacks and pouches, you would create the Wanderer backpack and then say, I want it to have 50 pounds or 20 pounds or 100 pounds. And then it would add a modifier to it, where it would be like um, slot 31 CC for carry capacity 20, meaning its carry capacity was 20. Um, so I just say, you know, like here, it, the, the carry capacity is set. This is a, a finite item. It is a singular backpack. I chose a lore friendly weight that it increases your carry weight for, and then just describe it. Um, and put it all into the same workbench. So that's, that's the utility and value of it. I know it's gonna be a niche market because you gotta have like all those mods, but those are really, really popular mods and I find it to be really useful and I, I really like it. So hopefully that makes more sense. Um, I was gonna do screenshots, but I felt like it just could confuse people or wouldn't do it justice. So I thought I'd break it all down here. And again, special thanks to those, all those mod authors for allowing me to just seamlessly put all this stuff into one workbench and clean up a lot of the clutter and stuff like that. All right. Thanks, guys.